Okay, you guys, we're back for part two. And sorry, I forgot to turn my other light on. I usually have two lights going um, in my room, so it's more lit up. So if that first video was a little bit dark, sorry about that. This one won't be. There's plenty of light now. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to do a little border going around here. So I'm going to use my um, Diane Wrigley stamp. You can use a stencil if you have a, any type of border of a... Of a, of a um, of a stencil you can use too. Like this is a Diane Ravely uh, border. You can do that. Or whatever you have. Or you can draw your own border in. So, but I decided I want to do these leaves. And I, did I just recently get this? No, this stamp is not cheap. This stamp was like, I don't know, $20, $25 or something like that. But I know I got it like less than half. I, I know I didn't pay more than 10 for it. Which still sounds kind of crazy for a stamp but I've always wanted this stamp okay so we're gonna stamp these leaves and what I like to do is I like to do a second stamp kind of right over that or kind of connect it because then it looks like there's um, there's um, do it again then it looks like there is um, leaves behind the leaves so it gives it a little bit more dimension so let's just keep going see where I'm at to make sure I'm still in frame yeah perfect okay and then kind of right over those I'll do it again a second stamp and it kind of see how it leaves a little bit of a shadow so it gives it dimension like it look like there's leaves behind leaves and then I'll stamp over that again Sorry guys, I'm having a little bit of trouble um, getting my stamp in here because um, my easel is in the way because this thing is really long. And this is also a, uh, there we go. This is also a Diane Reevely, um, uh what do you call this thing? The thing you put your stamps on? stamp block. Um, I love her stamp block. It's really huge. There's a ruler on this side and on this side is um, little lines that you can put the lines down um, in your journal and write with those lines. So you can make journal lines like this and you can make different you can make a you can make a border like this and kind of go like that with a pen. She does that and then she doodles in that. So you can do that too. So this is really cool and you guys if you can find these at Hobby Lobby they had these um, for like nothing. They had them for like, um, how much were they? It was crazy. It was like two fifty or something, two dollars and fifty cents. And I was good. I you know I should have picked it up and given it away as a giveaway, or just picked it up in, for a gift or something. But I'm like, well, I already have one, so I'll leave it for somebody else. But you know, I should have I should have done it and given it to you guys because I already have one. Okay, and then let's do a second stamping right there. Okay. Okay. And there we go. And to bring these leaves out, I won't finish up the leaves on here because it takes a little bit of time. But um, to bring the leaves out, you use a, um, a white paint pen and bring the leaves out and I'll show you that in a second here. Okay, so and I just use color box ink. You can use whatever ink you want. Let me take this and snap some leaves just on this tag to get rid of the ink. Okay, there we go. So waste nothing. So now we have a border going all the way around. Okay, let me come in just a little bit. Okay, and then what I like to do is I like this Jane Davenport paint pen, you guys. I think it's the best paint pen, white paint pen ever. It's called the Paint Over Pen, and it's called Unicorn. And you guys, it never gets clogged up. It never, it, it's awesome. You don't have to wait until the next day to use your paint pen on top of paint or anything. Just as long as it's dry, you're good to go, and it never clogs. I love this thing. 
and it's called a paint over pen. It's really cool. So all you're doing, and this is to bring out the leaves. And I like how Diane always says, she says, don't worry about being perfect. She's always on a plane, she says, traveling to teach or to go to a show like CHA. And um, I'll do a leaf right here. And uh, she goes, I'm on a plane. So, of course, you know, the plane gets does something and I mess up. So she goes, oh, I just go fast. And she goes, if I mess up, who knows? Because all my work's a little bit on the messy side. And I thought, you know what, that's such a great idea. And that causes you not to stress about everything so much. See how fast I'm going? But look how much this paint pen really brings out all of this. Love it. Okay, I'm not going to keep going too much longer with this paint pen. But it's like an addiction. I like the way, I like the sound it makes. I like, um... I like doing it it's like really relaxing <laughs> just to trace over these leaves I don't know why but it's relaxing okay so as you can see that's what we're looking like so far so you have all these leaves here uh, with your white paint pen that's going to bring out all the leaves and I love the shadowy ones in the background so it gives you like dimension gives you look like you did more work than you did okay so now what we want to do, this could come in a little bit. Make sure you guys can see those leaves really well. See how nice the leaves look now? Okay, so let's come out a little bit. There we go. Right there. Okay. And um, I want to put in some, um, Diane Reevely has these little die cuts, and you can either buy the stamps or you can buy the die cuts. So um, she does bodies, like a whole thing of bodies and then a whole thing of heads. So I cut these out, and um, I want to put these in here. How cool will this look? I'm going to put this one, like, right here. Okay, again, for the sake of time, I'm going to go ahead, I think I want to put this one here and then put this one down here. Yeah, that looks cool. For the sake of time, you guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pause again. I'm going to get these glued down and then we'll continue on. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, I'm back. And I decided a couple things and I was off here. Um, I went ahead and took a uh, stencil. And I took black paint and I stenciled through a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then I started outlining it in white. Come out a little bit more so you can see. And I started outlining it in white. So you can see that right here. And um, so I think that looks really cool. I wanted to do something in this little space here. So I decided to go ahead and I will glue with you on here. So I want to put, I think, her up here and I'll put her down here kind of here and then her little head going like this maybe we'll do her like this yeah I think I'll like that but you know what let's just quickly finish outlining the numbers and it's cool to kind of outline the numbers so they really stand out I like to outline in white, and then also I like to outline in gold. I have a cool gold pen from Dollar Tree, believe it or not, that works awesome. Okay, now, a lot of times I like to use, like, Elmer's glue or decoupage glue or something like this, but this Elmer's, I find, is really good as a um, as a glue stick, because I don't like very many glue sticks, but it's Elmer's Craft Bond Extra Strength glue stick. This glue stick works really, really good. So, which is weird for me, because I never glue stick anything. I always use like Mod Podge or like Elmer's glue watered down. So for me, it's weird, but. But I got that from Diane Reevely. She always uses a glue stick and I'm always like, oh, that's all you're doing is a glue stick. Okay. 
I've kind of been a little snob about glue stick, but then I found out, oh, wait a minute, did I just do that wrong? Yeah, I did. But then I found out there's all types of glue sticks, so. And there's really good glue sticks. I've learned that from a lot of different crafters here on YouTube. That all glue sticks are not equal. And most glue sticks do suck. <laughs> and then we'll put her head on. I kind of need her to go down a little lower. Oh, can I take it off? Nope, it's on there. Because her head is kind of big. You know what? This is all funky, so it don't matter. Right? That's what's cool about Diane's work. It's all funky and fun. So if you mess up a little bit, there is no messing up. Okay. So... We have a little bit of color on her face because um, my mat here is kind of um, messy. But we'll work that in. So I'll use a magazine this time to glue this down to glue my pieces. What happens is is that, um, that uh, any of the spray left on your mat is very reactive with anything, with water, with the glue stick, whatever. It's reactive majorly. But you guys, that's how good this glue stick is. That, um, look, I couldn't even get anything back up after I glued it down. Which is good, because then you know that it's, whatever you glue down, it's going to tack down. Okay, I wanted to put her, this like that. There we go. All right, let me wash my hands off a little bit, you guys, with a baby wipe. I got a lot of stuff on my hands. I should maybe just go wash my hands. I don't know. My hands are a mess. Look at those. But I'm having fun, so who cares? Okay. So there we go. I have a little bit of marking on her face, but I'm not going to worry about that. When I go in to color her face and shade her in, it'll I'll make it look like there's a little bit of color bouncing off onto her. Okay. What I love about what Diane does is she takes um, these water brushes and she puts the color in the water brushes. Her her water her um her sprays in the water brushes, and then she just quickly. Um, colors in their outfits. So I'm just trying to see how I want to do this. I think I want to just make her top this color. Look how quick and easy this is, you guys. So it's just doing a quick little, giving it a quick little watercolor. If you want, you can take another color and shade if you want. She never bothers. <laughs> well, she shades sometimes. It just depends. But she always colors in her um, people really fast. And I was like, that is cool. I like the no sweating it, you know, like no stress. That's what I like about hers, her techniques. It's like there's no um, sweating it. There's no stressing out about this and stressing out about that. Choose a color. Go. <laughs> That's her technique. <laughs> I love it. Okay. And then I'm going to do these pants in purple. And then I'm going to, um, she doesn't, a lot of times she'll just leave this, she'll just leave the, uh, the face white or she, um, stamps it out onto cardstock. Then she uses that, leaves that same color for the face for the cardstock. 
I like to shade mine in, so I'm going to do some, um, I'm going to color and shade mine in with uh, watercolor pencils and um, Prismacolor pencils, um, regular Prismacolor pencils. I'll probably do that off camera just because it takes me a little bit of time. And I want to get to other techniques. All right, we'll make this little guy, like this little guy turquoise. There's like a little deer in her headpiece here. We'll just make that turquoise. And we will make this raspberry. And we'll just continue with raspberry for her glasses. And then, like I said, I'm going to do a little bit of shading on her face. Okay. And then let's go over here. And I will put this for the blouse. And I'm just using the same colors that we used in the background. So it all just kind of goes together. And the hat will do, do the whole hat in purple. And then since our hat's in purple, we're going to do the, um, her, I think these are just panty, or these are just tights or leggings. We'll do those also in purple. Look how I'm not even like stressing about it. I love it. I'm not even worrying about shading. I'm just doing a quick little wash over everything. And I love it. Okay. And then let's give her some funky fuchsia shorts. And then we'll take that funky fuchsia to the shoes. If you stick with the same colors as the background, you can make quick decisions with how you're going to color her in really quick. And then that's a part of the outfit right there. So that looks really cool. Okay, so, on, oh, another thing. I need to go find... Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and color the skin off, off camera. I'm going to shade that all in. And then I'm going to show you guys how I outline this um, so it brings things out. So we'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. We don't have that much more time on this part two, but in part three, um, I will have uh, her all shaded in, colored and shaded in. Um, but what I wanted to show you is you can take um, a, a black oil pastel. You guys, black oil pastels are really, really cheap. Um, you get them at Hobby Lobby, a whole set, especially right now because everything's clearance for like two bucks. But if not, you can use a coupon and... Um, get Master's Touch uh, oil pastels for like $7, but right now you can probably get them cheaper than that. So anyway, I'm just taking the oil pastel, taking this, and then this is to uh, give shading around everything. I saw somebody use their oil pastel for shading, and you can use your finger too, but I like to use a Q-tip. And um, I thought, oh, that's a good way to do some shading. I also like to use a um, watercolor pencil, put it, and then use my uh, watercolor pencil, and then use a little brush, and you can shade like that too. That's another way. There's a lot of different ways to do this, uh, this black shading. Okay, that's coming up just a little bit right there, and I'll fix all that. So I'm not going to do shade right here right now. Well, I'll go ahead and shade right here. I'm not quite sure why that's coming up because everything else didn't want to come up. I must not attach that real well. But hopefully you guys are seeing the shading that I'm doing around in here. And you have to watch what you're... Well, over acrylic paint, um, 
oil pastels are going to work perfect. Now, oil pastels are not going to work perfect over everything. Well, this isn't acrylic. This is over watercolor. And I, the reason I chose um, the oil pastel, too, instead of using watercolor, because I thought, you know what? This is so reactive with water or anything. This oil pastel is not going to activate the watercolor or her sprays, which are basically, they're water-based. Any water hits them and they just activate. So, okay. So, you guys, I'm going to continue to go ahead and throw shading around like this with my um, pencil, with my um, oil pastel and my Q-tip. And I'm going to then um, take my um, watercolor pencils and some Prismacolor um, pencil, regular pencils, and... Um, and, sh and go ahead and color in the skin and the face, okay? And then I will be back. And I will check you guys out in, I believe, part three. Okay, see you then.